Good day, learners! Like other ecosystems, estuaries and intertidal zones needs to be protected because of the presence of organisms that are dependent on their unique conditions. Our country is rich in different forms of ecosystem because of the presence of so many rivers and long shorelines. Like the Manila Bay which has both intertidal zones and estuaries, humans should do actions that will not destroy but support the interactions of the organisms living in the area. There are a lot of ways of taking good care of the environment. This lesson will help you understand the need to protect and conserve estuaries and intertidal zones. The feeding relationships among organisms can be shown by a food chain. A food chain is a series of organisms in which each organism feeds on another organism and so on. A food chain always begins with a producer. These are examples of food chains. When food chains are interlinked, they form a food web. A food web consists of two or more food chains. Here is an example of a food web. You learned in the previous lesson that intertidal zones and estuaries are homes to different kinds of living things. This make them a vital place of the earth. These places are meant to be protected by us human beings. Thus, we should protect and conserve our environment now before it's too late. Here's what you can do to protect and conserve estuaries and intertidal zones. At home, as much as possible, avoid using synthetic fertilizers. Plants do not absorb them completely and it can wash off into our streams and waterways. Use natural fertilizers instead. Trimmed grass clippings from your lawn can be used as a natural fertilizer. Cut grass moderately. A little height can make the roots move deeper and may lessen erosion. Grow plants in your garden. Choose plants that are native to your area so that it would need less water and fertilizer. Dispose toxic products properly. Improper disposal may pollute coastal rivers and estuaries. Remind your parents to pump your septic tanks at least every three years. Use non-toxic pesticides. Examples of which is a mixture of soap water 
and chili pepper. Excessive use of toxic pesticides can pollute nearby waterways. Look for natural alternatives to chemical-based household products. Examples are table salt and baking soda. Always clean up after your pet's waste. Never let their waste be washed up to waterways and end up polluting our estuaries. While at the beach, leave our beaches clean. Always pick up your trash and dispose it properly. Do not disturb or keep animals that you found along the shoreline. Avoid using motorized boats in sensitive habitats. Use canoe or kayak if you want to snorkel near the coral reefs. When on a boat, avoid throwing your trash out to the sea. Estuaries are important because it filters dirt before the fresh water enters the seas or oceans. It also filters the salt from the seas and oceans before it enters the mouth of the river. It also plays a vital role during storm since it serves as an exit point for floods. Can you imagine life without estuaries and intertidal zones? That ends our lesson for today. I hope you learned something from the discussion. Kita kids in the next lessons. Until next time, goodbye.